So welcome to dun, 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 the final coaches prep session. Very momentous occasion. Um, and we are um, we're actually going to merge test boxes five and six. So um, we've already kind of had our chat about the, the WebEx. Um, so I'll have to change this slide, I think, because it doesn't really hold true anymore. Uh, but as I said, Jen will We'll monitor for any questions or comments and bring them forward. And just like always, uh, if you're on a, a smartphone, use that mute function. But if not, star six is the uh, function for muting and unmuting on the uh, telecom line. All right. Um, the, uh, unless you're in the room with somebody else, um, we can see you in the attendee list, but if you if there's more than one of you gathered around the computer, if you can just pop that in the chat box, um, and Jennifer will will watch for that. Um, it is pretty early morning, but if uh, if you happen to have gathered, let us know so we know if we're if we're missing someone. So the the test box five and and also six, it's kind of five slash six, but we're just calling it five, um, are available on the top website now. Um, and uh, you should be able to access everything you need there. Um, and if you have any problems, of course, just let us know, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're all, the links are all working fine uh, this morning. So just to start off, um, is there anything that you you know, wanted to comment on or chat about? Um, and if not, what we would like to know is where are your teams at? Are they are they kind of caught up and champing at the bit for test box five, or are they you know still kind of plugging away at test box three? Or where where are they? What's going on? Again, if you want to come off mute, that would be great. Uh, <clears throat> it's Monica. Um, so our team's actually quite caught up now. <laughs> we <had to> start, <laughs> but we were able to jump ahead a little bit. Um, I think we just attributed it. We had this conversation at one of our last meetings was um, because it is AHS Clinic, a lot of the stuff has been already put in place. Uh, couple of test boxes, so it's just there's already working groups addressing some of those things. Um, so they have the luxury a little bit of having those re resources. Um, so in terms of act stuff, we're really just focusing on the use of the form now with patients and just collecting all that feedback. Great. Great. So actually putting it into action. So that's that's always a rewarding a rewarding time. <laughs> well thanks Monica. Uh, Sure, I just added in the chat, in the test box, um, or in the chat box that they're around test box three, four. Okay, great. So coming along, and again, there's there's still time, so so no need for any concern. We know the teams are all in different different places, so no problem. Thanks, Charlotte. Who else would like to share where their team's at? It's Laura. <clears throat> We're at Sylvan Family Health, and we are um, kind of in between three and four. We still have a few little things here and there. We are starting a little bit to implement the form, and so that's a little bit exciting because we're um, finding lots of value in it. So, Oh, wonderful. That's what we like to hear. Thank you so much. Yeah, I see a few more people have joined. So if you're just joining us now, we're just, uh, just checking in and seeing where your teams are at with the test. Uh, Ariel and Cheryl, Lisa. Hey, how about if Stephanie? Can I can I call on you to to update us on where your teams are at? Sure. Um, there are so many teams, so it's hard to keep track of where everyone's <laughs> at. And yeah. Generally, they're all over the place. But one thing that um, I kind of wanted to share, and I'm really glad Brittany just joined me in the room here, Brittany Fox. Thanks. Um, okay. We um, we just held our first workshop for COPD Pact, 
And um, we have taken so many learnings from our previous workshops. And um, one thing that's really unique to this workshop is that we're very consciously um, identifying a patient representative um, right on the onset. And um, I don't know, Brittany, maybe if you wanted to speak to that a little bit more. Um, yeah, hi. So we've had um, 10 doctors, some with teams, some without, join us at the last, um, the, our first COPD packed workshop. And we tried to really promote the teams bringing um, patient advisors. And so far we've had five teams uh, identify a patient advisor. And what we're asking them is for the next three workshops that they bring the patient advisor and have them join as part of their team. Uh, and then also uh, that they work with those patient advisors in between. Um, and we're going to try to bring the advisors in before the before their first time joining us for PACT to give them a little bit of um, discussion on what it's like to be part of a QI team. Wow. So, yeah, we're really excited to see how it goes. It's our first time trying something like this. That's awesome. Well, we are going to be really excited to hear about uh, about what you have to share, what you learn about that. Thanks so much. Yeah, for sure. Great. Um, let's see. Let's go. Um, Laura, can I call on you? Yeah, we're from Film Family Health. I just mentioned that we are uh, between kind of three and four, and we're working on. Oh, um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Just find yeah. value. Sorry, continue there. That's all right. All right. All right, Laura. Uh, Lisa, I think I meant to say. Would you mind telling us where you're at? Now it can take a moment to come off mute. Hi, where is it? Read home to Lisa Kemp? Yeah. Oh, and where <laughs> I'm at, sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Well, actually, I was going to get an update from Darren because I'm meeting with him tomorrow to talk oh. about the RIFS work. But uh, so I, on, I haven't heard an update since the last time as to exactly where they're at. I do know that they're all presenting at the Accelerated Conference, which is at the end of November. So that's really exciting um, on the packed work. So Great. Well, thank you. Um, let's see, how about uh, Cheryl? I don't think we've heard from you yet. So I work with Stephanie and Brittany, so I'm part of that oh, QI team. Okay. Oh, of course, Same of thing. course, okay. Yeah. So we'll get that. All right. Um, I think Ariel might be the only one we haven't heard from yet then. Hi, I'm working with Charlotte, so we're doing some things from test box three and four. Um, yeah, we've been yep. we've been kind of pushing through, trying to um, continue to book with myself being away um, for a few days here coming up and things like that, just getting down to the end of this and pushing through with getting all these appointments done. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thanks very much. Um, the updates, and we'll we'll get into the we'll get into the meet then. Unless I missed anybody, I think I think we heard from every every group. If not, speak now. All right. I think that was about eight, so I'll continue on. So in test box five slash six, um, there are. Uh, a few potentially better practices to choose from. And um, as I mentioned, we've, we've grouped the two last boxes to allow the teams a little more time to, to not feel the pressure so they, can, they have more time and space to work, work on the materials that they're already, already working on and then, and then start to take on these new ones. And this particular test box is quite um, interrelated and, and complementary. So I have a feeling that the teams will probably want to consider working on all of the components and potentially around at the same time because they are uh, quite interrelated as you're, as you're going to see. So the first part that we have is on continuity. And um, we've had sections on continuity on just about every test box. 
and, and because we know that in order to have good continuity um, with uh, their physician and clinic team, patients need to be able to access the appointments when they need them. And um, we've talked about that. Now we're going to get a little deeper into the other components of continuity. So as um, we all know, we've talked a lot about, about relational continuity, and, and that one really... Um, it's about doing everything we can to make sure that patients are connected to one provider and the team so that they're seeing that, that um, team of people as often as possible for all of their primary care needs. But we want to dive a little deeper into informational and management continuity with this test box, and that's really where the care plan document itself um, is strongly involved. So if we take a look at that care plan, the one, the, the packed care plan template, if we think about informational continuity, it's about sharing information like medical history, things related to um, conditions, medications, medical events, and the patient's social history. Um, and that that allows care that's appropriate to the patient's current circumstances, including what matters to them. And so that information can be, can be shared with other providers, and it saves the patient from having to repeat their story um, or even having to remember the details of their medical history. And sometimes people have pretty complex histories, and they may not remember the dates or amounts or even um, necessarily the names of the medications that they're taking. So we know that's quite patient-centered. When it comes to management continuity, it's more about ensuring that the care received from different providers is, is connected in a coherent way so that, again, um, there aren't sort of competing approaches to how the patient's care is being managed. And so um, this section, Part C, that we're going to talk about in this test box really does tie in nicely with, with management continuity. Like always, with pretty much everything we do in these test boxes, a key message for coaches um, with this poten potentially better practice, and, and as I mentioned, pretty much all the others, is to make sure that the team starts small. First of all, that they, that they take a PDSA approach, and with that, that they start small, because we know teams get enthusiastic, and they often want to just jump to big changes. Um, but that can really become overwhelming. So just remind the team that one external provider um, for one patient who has a care plan is a great place to start, and then over time they can expand that process. So basically we're in the test box, the teams will be asked to select, to select one patient and ask that patient who they're working with externally, um, select one of those external providers, and then um, invite that provider to, to view the care plan and see if they have any gaps that they can fill or if they have any input that they'd like to provide from the work that they've been doing with the patient and make that care plan actually a tool that, that, um, that is used on behalf of the patient uh, to keep that management continuity going. And there are lots of options for this, um, but again, we encourage the team to PDSA it and find, find a strategy that works in, for them in their own context. So in the test box itself, you'll see this is all laid out, the suggested test to PDSA and, and um, how, how this could work. And um, it's interesting, I was, <laughs> I was at the dentist yesterday and I just thought I'd run by him, you know, what would you think? if uh, someone with some complex health needs brought in their care plan from their family doctor and you were invited to have a look at it and make sure that you know, your records were up to date with theirs and add in any information like you'd diagnosed the patient for periodontal disease which could have cardiac implications. And he was really, really open to the idea and, and thought it would be fantastic. So I'm um, really excited to hear what happens with this if the teams find it valuable and, and how, it's, how it's received um, by other providers out in the field. 
included in the test box is a bit of a sample invitation. So, of course, we want to make sure that teams take some time to think about how they're going to invite those external providers. Um, this is just a, a sample um, that they're certainly um, encouraged to come up with something that will work for them, and we would love to see what they come up with. If they find one that's working well, you know, if they've refined their invitation, um, of course, we those are the sorts of things that we'd love to gather so that we can share them with other teams down the road. Um, and of course, an important point of all of this is that the patient has given their um, their approval and their permission for for this information to be shared with other providers. Um, one thing we're quite excited about included in this part of the test box is um, a video. So it's linked within um, within the, the document itself, and it's uh, Dr. Sarah Smith from Edson telling her story of, of doing just what I've been talking about. She, she sort of fell into doing it accidentally, but now it's become a really... Um, a big part of what she does is she she does invite others to to join in uh, on on the care plan document um, with with her for her patients and and started off with a, a pharmacist in a situation that uh, um, is quite interesting. So I encourage you to watch this with your with your teams if you can because I think they'll find it quite quite encouraging. And we'd love to hear your feedback on it when you get a chance to watch it. So are there any questions or thoughts uh, on on this particular part? And, and I'd love to know some of the teams that are maybe um, already doing some of this work, uh, are there any that, that are already sending the, the care plan to other providers for input? Knowing it takes a few minutes to come off, come off mute. Michelle, Hi. this is Mia. Oh. Hi. I was just going to say that um, for the teams who are listening, that uh, and apologies for my voice this morning, guys. I'm still fighting the <laughs> cold, but it's it's actually better than it was. <laughs> um, I actually had a chance to meet with Dr. Sarah Smith not too long ago uh, for some other work that she's doing, and uh, and the the value that she's been getting out of sharing that care plan with other um, other um, not just other providers like multidisciplinary teams and like pharmacists for example, uh, she's been getting a lot of very surprising. And I haven't watched the video yet. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to go look because I'm super excited <laughs> to see it. Um, but she has got a lot of unexpected value out of it and um, has managed to catch a lot of things that wouldn't have previously been caught. Um, has, you know, even the pharmacists themselves being able to, um, uh, you know, reduce medications. Like there's, there's so many things going on that it was just such a huge benefit. So I just want to encourage everybody to go see the video and, um, and just really consider um, starting to loop in people that are on your team, uh, that are that are to become part of your extended team, and um, uh, and it's really fantastic work. Wow! Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah, I, I, I we were so excited when we heard when we heard her story too, and and I think it's going to be really inspiring. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And and I should I should clarify when I say other providers. Um, I, I'm, I'm meaning not just other physicians and specialists, but, but also, um, you know, pharmacists and, and CDM nurses or physiotherapists, like whomever um, is responsible for an aspect of the patient's care um, would be who, who we, would, we would think would be appropriate for, for testing this out with. But, again, you can talk to your teams about that. Hi, Michelle. Yeah. Um, this is Arielle from Kalena PCN. Um, just to add to that, I don't know if I've shared this on a teleconference, um, but we actually had really good feedback. The PACS care plan was shared with home care in our smaller community. Um, uh. And, yeah, one of the girls that I actually went to school with had asked me, are you responsible for making this care plan? It's so great. It shares a lot of information. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly why they had the care plan. I believe it was palliative care type stuff, but 
yeah, they um, ended up seeing it and they really liked it and it had been brought to their attention how good it was and just the level of communication on have we talked about a green sleeve, do we have something in place there, and just what is important to the patient and everything mm -hmm. about their health history that's on that care plan. Oh, that warms my heart. Wow. Thank you so much. I hope you took full credit for it, too. No, I didn't. I told them to go to the top website and have a look at it. <laughs> well, well, you have had input, so there you go. You could you could have taken at least partial credit. All of you have been involved in shaping what uh, what PACT will be when, it's, when it goes out into the world. So thank you for that. That's great. Monica added a comment, too. About just about um, inviting patients to share the care plan with their caregiver, partner, and other supports um, for input, and that's been a big focus of theirs. Great. Thanks, Monica. Hi. Anyone it's, else? Sorry, it's Karen Horsley joining. I'm sorry I joined so late. I oh, thought this okay. was a Skype visit, and I was uh, for a Skype meeting, and I was waiting for everyone, and <laughs> I thought, oh. Anyway, so I'm here. I'm just on a phone line, but um, oh, okay. yeah, I apologize for uh, connecting so late. Oh, no problem, no problem. Great. Well, um, great. Anyone else have a comment about about sharing the care plan? We'll move we'll move to the next part. All right. Well, great discussion. Thank you. Um, and Jennifer, if you want to introduce us to the Collaborative Goal Setting and Action Planning. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, so we've built a section on Collaborative Goal Setting and Action Planning. Um, this is not something new to a lot of providers. It's a common behavior change technique. Um, however, what we do here is that providers do struggle to co-create meaningful goals and actions in an effective and efficient way. So we really for this section have uh, built it around and focused on, you know, some of the uh, potentially better practices and tips that teams can use to really uh, do collaborative goal setting and action planning well. So we're really building off of some of the content uh, from previous test boxes. Uh, we've, we've talked before about how a well-designed care plan template can be a great tool to really translate that patient-centered uh, patient care into practice. And so we continue to reinforce that. In test box three, if you recall, uh, part A we focused on, which was medical summary. Then in test box four, we focused on part B, the social history. And for this, um, for this test box, we're focused on part C, the goal and action plan. So if you want to go to the next slide, I'll just give a quick overview of some of the content. So um, within the test box, we go back and we review goal setting. If you recall, in test box four, we included um, a resource um, and just some kind of background information on goal setting to build that common understanding of what it means to create meaningful and relevant goals. So for this test box, we then build on that and really look at the action planning component. And again, what, it, you know, what are some um, better practices or tips for creating those meaningful actions that really are gonna help um, create those steps or um, completion of specific tasks that are gonna help patients achieve the goals that they've set. So we divided it into four key tip areas. Um, first around, you know, again, selecting meaningful actions that make sense for, for their life at this point, like it's realistic for them to achieve. Uh, we talk about, again about barriers, um, in particular with the planning component, uh, what might get in the way of them being able to accomplish those tasks so that they can account for that and even build in their plan. Um, you know, some uh, contingency plans or things they might need to do to make sure that they're able to accomplish those actions. Uh, we talk about narrowing in, again, on specific beha behaviors or tasks um, rather than, you know, being general and give some tips on how to do that. And um, we also focus on confidence and how to, you um, Check in on confidence, and of course that was built into the care plan template, that confidence rating, 
And then some ideas of what to do if uh, confidence is lower than expected and how to either help um, modify the actions or use other supports within the community um, or plan more frequent follow-up, for example. So some tips uh, if, if um, you sense or the patient uh, you know, admits that they have uh, lower confidence. So um, next slide, I'm really excited um, to share that we built a number of resources uh, uh, that are linked to the test box content um, and really excited to share those. So one of the resources on the, the left-hand side of the screen is a, a, a question and answer around goal setting and action planning. Again, it, it is a fairly similar um, concept for providers, but at times providers get confused between goals and actions, and so this helps to clarify uh, the difference and provide some specific um, examples to make that clear. We built another video uh, and posted it on YouTube, which again walks uh, the teams through section um, C of the care plan, uh, highlighting the different components built in uh, to reinforce or um, help providers use uh, certain uh, potentially better practices, so how that was built in, and some key considerations when having conversations with patients and working through section C. And then the other tool that we built was a problem-solving tool. We did hear from some teams that they're finding it really useful to have some practice support tools. And so uh, we built a problem-solving tool because often in the discussions um, for goal setting and action planning, uh, problems can arise or barriers and issues that they need to work through. And so uh, we built this tool um, that providers can use with patients to guide them through this um, you know, well-known steps to help address uh, those problems and work through those. And um, I just wanna highlight, by using these types of tools, it really builds self-management skills because um, uh, patients start to see and understand the different steps. And um, by um, working through and having exposure to it, then they may then use similar steps to address other problems in between visits um, and get that repetition so that uh, really valuable. That's one of uh, another one of the tools. Next slide. We have another slide of resources because we've built a couple other things. Um, so one of the other things that we're excited about is uh, some video demonstrations. Um, we have two uh, approximately six-minute demonstrations. One is of the goal setting and action planning conversation. And then uh, the second one is using what we're calling goal setting category cards uh, as a conversation tool um, that can be used with patients to really help build health literacy of some of the things that they need to do over time to manage their condition and then start to prioritize the areas of action. One of the reasons why we built these videos is that it is a common misconception that goal setting and action planning takes a lot of time. And so we wanted to show um, some demonstrations of how you, by you know, working through key steps, how you can work with patients um, to approach goal setting and action planning in a very structured and meaningful way within the time constraints of a visit. So um, please do check those out um, uh, uh, with your team. And like I said, they're six minutes. So they're um, meant to be a, a reasonable time for teams to sit down and, and watch. Um, I mentioned that one of the videos is using the goal setting cards. And so we did uh, include a PDF copy of uh, goal setting cards that can be printed out. This is just the first page. You'll see that some of the cards are blank, which uh, leaves it open to team for teams to um, add in their own um, categories or actions you know, specific to the conditions that, uh, of the population that they're working with. Um, so please uh, look for those. And if you have the chance to actually print out a couple copies, ideally it would be on cardstock um, if that's available, but paper can work too. And then uh, you can um, just cut up the different cards and uh, teams can test using them. Next slide. So just a few tips for you guys as you go off and work with teams. Um, 
We know that many of you, uh, many of the teams have either been using the PACT Care Plan template or are starting to alter it or, um, or alter ones that they've used previously. Um, just encourage them to, as they look through the test box materials, to check in and, and reflect on whether or not some of the practices that are highlighted in this test box are um, included or a part of the conversation uh, for the goals and actions. Then we have, um, I mentioned in the last um, coaches meeting, uh, the see one, do one, teach one learning approach. And that was one of the reasons why we created some video demos so that people can uh, see what it, a, a demonstration of a goal setting action planning conversation, then go off and do one themselves. And when they're feeling comfortable, be able to teach one to a colleague. So that might be a, an approach that you could con uh, consider encouraging teams to use. We have heard uh, that the term goal may not be ideal language for, for everyone or, or certain populations, and um, we included some mention of this in the test box. Uh, so, you know, I encourage you to have a discussion with your team about that. And um, there are some ideas of alternative language that can be used, but even uh, the team may come up with some other ideas of, of things that have worked for them with other clients. So. Um, could be a really valuable discussion for the team. I mentioned about printing off the goal setting cards already. And um, the other thing with the problem solving tool with some of those decision support tools, sometimes some um, providers or anybody really can be uncomfortable using it the first time. So if there's opportunity to actually use it within a team meeting or team huddle uh, to work through a problem that the team's having or an individual um, from the team brings forward, uh, just walk through the steps of the tool. Um, it can be, again, valuable to have that exposure uh, so that they're more familiar with the tool and then maybe more comfortable to try it out uh, with, um, with patients. And of course, as Michelle mentioned, reflecting on how you use a, a PDSA, start with one, one patient before thinking that they're going to use it um, with all of the patients that they, um, is a really good approach. And, um, and, and again, just trying to create that uh, learning environment and to have self-compassion when they're trying out new things and uh, using a trial and error approach because there are going to be times where things don't go quite as expected, but it is a really great learning opportunity. So um, just continuing to uh, encourage that environment. Next slide. The, all those resources are up on the top website, so please do check them out. The videos are uh, linked within the test box document, so look for the videos in there. And I'll uh, finish off with any questions people have about this section. Um, are there any particular resources that you think will be quite valuable? Um, I'll just open it up here. And while people are coming off mute, Jennifer, I'll just add that I think I think the uh, the resources are going to be really helpful, and in particular for those that are that are really trying to um, embed the health change methodology in in the work they're doing with patients. I think they'll find it really helpful to see the demonstrations of mm -hmm. um, of how it's how it's used in in practice and and how smooth and conversational it is, but you'll see you'll see the elements you'll see you'll see practice principles um, pulled in in the discussion and it, it again it looks effortless and just a lovely conversation but but if you watch closely you'll see the methodology at work behind behind the scenes. Thanks for mentioning that, Michelle. All right. If, if there are any questions that come up, certainly do you get a hold of uh, PAC Central, happy to help or address any questions or that people are having. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. All right, moving on to coordinating care. Um, so historically, a challenge with care planning has been that the appointment happens and the patient agrees to take some actions 
Um, but then the appointment is over, and nothing really happens again until it comes time for next year's care planning appointment. And so for that reason, in this part of the, the test box, we're talking about um, potentially designating one member of the team for each individual patient to follow up on what happens after the care planning appointment. And that would be for the duration of that, that year. So this might seem like a lot, but using the EMR as a reminder tool can make this a lot simpler. Um, and so you, you may want to encourage your teams to simultaneously work on this test box component and the one entitled using EMR tools to trigger follow-up on care planning activities. And we're going to hear from Lori in a few minutes um, to tell you more about that. But this is what I mean when I'm saying that this test box seems to be very interrelated. So. Um, within the test box itself, in the test section, um, the first question relates to this part, and it's designed to stimulate team discussion about uh, working with the patient to plan for follow-up. So how are they going to organize out so that one team member is always um, responsible for the follow-up component of each patient who's had a care plan um, created? And, um, and you know, how are they going to work with the patient to, to uh, make sure that there's a plan in place so the patient's not surprised? You know, how often shall we check in? How would you prefer? Do you want... Do you want um, to have a phone call? Um, at what interval? And or do you do you want to you know text? Or depending on your clinics and and how advanced they are with their technology, they may have some other options that they want to try out. So again, it's having those discussions, and the the test box will um, prompt them uh, with some questions to have have a good discussion. Another part of the test box is about um, about referral management, and of all of the components of, t of care planning, this can be one of the most challenging. Um, so this one talks about a referral inventory and how it can help clinics to be a little more efficient when making referrals. So some parts might be pretty straightforward to gather and update, like, like PCN programs that are being offered uh, in your area, and others are, of course, less simple. So in many cases, the information resides in team members' heads. Um, from previous experience, they've had referring patients to a particular program or a specialist. And so it can be things like, like wait times for programs, whether this program um, likes to be faxed or phoned for referrals, um, whether a specialist has actually moved their practice or closed their practice. Uh, it may even be information on, you know, uh, a program that's that's not easily accessible by a bus if someone is traveling that way. And these are the kinds of things that you really want to harvest um, from from team members um, and get it down somewhere so that everyone can access this in, a, in an organized way. And again, just kind of getting it out of the heads of the team and down somewhere. And the sparkly lanyard is here because one of the the aspects in the in the test box is um, just a, a little anecdote about a team that actually designates one team member. It's a rotating role, and they happen to have all all female um, team members who who rotate in and out of this role. And they call them they call her the referral queen. And when you're the referral queen, you get the sparkly lanyard to wear your your uh, your tags on, and that person is responsible for making sure that the the referral inventory is kept up to date during that that time. So, just again an example for the teams of something to think about as they're as they're planning how they want to approach it. So back in the test box, the questions two, three, and four are related to this aspect and. Um, and you can go through it with your teams and uh, and just stimulate some conversation about if they're already doing this, is it working, what's not, and, and what could they do if not to, to create some sort of um, referral um, inventory, and who will keep it up to date, 
how will we use the EMR if that's possible? Like that would be ultimate. That's always our goal. If we can use the EMR to organize uh, the information, even to the point where um, some EMRs you can attach the information to the referral form. So when you pull up that referral form, you see, ah, okay, this is information that the patient might need to know about location, or um, this is, you know, a quirk of this program that you need to know that will make things more efficient and effective. So again, just something to think about. Any thoughts or questions? Again, if your teams are already doing stuff like this, we'd love to know, or if you think it's something that will be received. Anything? Okay. I think I waited for eight. So I'm going to guess then that maybe this will be maybe new for the team. So something something to think about. And, and again, we look forward to hearing back from you and the teams um, how it goes, you know, in your, your PDSAs and your discussions. And um, so we can learn from you before we, we pass this on to teams across the province. Okay, so speaking of the EMR, Lori Choma, are you ready to come off mute and tell us all about it? Oh, that buzzing does not sound encouraging. Oh, <laughs> Lori, if that's you, uh, something is not quite working. Hmm. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, um, I, that was my that was my speakerphone. Sorry. Um, okay, so like Michelle said, um, we've been working on um, the coordination of care, and um, we've been working primarily with the um, with the EMR and looking at the data standardization, we started out by running some lists. And what we want to do now is we want to be able to search for patients and do the planned care that uh, we've been talking about um, throughout all of the test boxes. Lori, I think we lost you. So can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can hear you, yeah. Okay, gosh, sorry. Is is that better? I'm yes. not sure what's going on there. Yeah. Um so we've been wanting to talk about the different um um or sorry, using the EMR reminders and doing the planned care. And um there's this is something that most of your teams have probably already been using um, if they've been doing Alberta screening and prevention. So there's two parts to this that, that we wanted to highlight. The first one are the individual EMR reminders. Um, this is when you're working patient by patient. You'll want to, or you can use this feature to, um, when you want to plan a follow-up for um, for an appointment, or if you know that you need to follow up with them after they go for an imaging or remind them of something like that, this is something that you would use. And it's a really good place to start if your teams aren't using a feature like this. So the good thing about this one is that you can actually ramp it up um, using a PDSA cycle. So you really can start with one patient, uh, move it up to five patients if it's working well, and then use it on 25 patients, and then um, once it's working well for you, um, scale, scale that up. The, the key here is, though, is who is going to do it, when it's going to be done, and how it's going to be done. So the, when you're in an appointment, um, it could be the individual, it could be the nurse um, or pharmacist who actually sets the reminder, um, or it could be someone else who um, gets the notification um, within the office to actually do it. So 
that's part of the discussion is if you're going to be using these reminders for patients, who's doing them, when are they doing them, how are they actually getting entered? So is it happening right after the appointment? Um, is, is, are, they being, are they being batched? So the other kinds of reminder um, are the population-wide EMR reminders. And this is one that we talked about probably a little bit more um, with um, the Alberta screening and prevention work um, is when we were looking across um, populations. And um, this will be a little bit different, and, and you'll want to talk to your teams about, well, when do we use an individual reminder, and when would a population-wide reminder be more, more useful? And so I think that's why starting with the individual ones is probably um, a, better, a better start, um, because you can start to say, okay, well, you know, we set the same individual reminder um, over and over again for some of our patients. Is there a way for us to actually do this um, population-wide? Um, so if you have a particular patient population that you follow up um, in certain increments, like every three months, let's say, um, you can actually um, try to see if you could set a population-wide reminder um, to, to recall patients um, on a regular basis um, instead of actually setting those reminders patient, patient by patient. So um, that's one example, but um, depending on your care planning populations, you'll have your own um, examples as you, as you go through. Um, the difference with the population-wide reminders is you can't scale them up in the same way um, because once you turn them on, you're turning them on for the whole, for the whole population. Uh, so uh, we suggest as you build your, your um, population-wide reminders, A, just in the building process, that you do a lot of checks as you're going through, that you build them incrementally, so you kind of build them in a little bit of that PDSA model. Um, so you, you, you um, put in a criteria, you run a search on it to see which patients it's bringing up. Um, if that looks correct, then you keep adding on um, adding criteria onto it. So that's one way um, to do a test for population-wide wide reminders. Um, and then just turning it on, make sure, making sure you just turn it on for one doc um, for one day to test um, and that that, that doc or, or whoever the care, um, whoever is providing that care to the patient or, or receiving that reminder um, knows at the end or knows what they need to do with it or um, and can flag when something's going wrong and bring it back and say, well, I got flagged for this patient, um, but it, uh, it wasn't correct, um, some, something was wrong, and then the team can go back um, and check to see. Typically, uh, it's, it's a data, data standardization uh, issue, so um, the team can go back and check. Um, and then people can also say, hmm, there's a population-wide reminder, I just saw something here, and it should have applied to this patient. Um, so that's another, that's um, the way that you can ramp up those population-wide EMR reminders. So these are the two places um, that, we're, that we want to start. Um, there are some other features in some of the EMRs um, and, you know, sending tasks uh, to, to one another. Um, there's different ways that, uh, that um, the EMRs can do these functions, but this is at a, at a general level. Uh, is that they can be done at the individual level or the population um, at the population level. So with that, I'll get you. I think that is um, oh just uh, just a reminder um, on the tools on the Toward Optimized web Toward Optimized Practice website. Um, the tools that you've seen over the past couple of test boxes have been new content that we built for PACT. Um, because it's not content and information that we've had um, already available. Um, the information on using individual reminders as well as population-wide reminders already exists in, in the different tip sheets. Um, so we've highlighted that for you in, in the test box uh, as well. I think all of the um, video libraries also have content on um, building um, these population wide reminders, um, so you can take, take a look at those. They're all focused um, in on screening. Um, that was our focus when a lot of these videos were built. 
um, but it's the same it's the same process just applied uh, to a different uh, a different clinical area. All right, I think that was it. Just those couple of slides, so I'll open that up for some questions. Thanks, Lori. Okay, well, I, I think that's I think that's waiting for eight. Um, I wasn't anticipating a lot of questions uh, around this test box. I think for the most part, most of your clinics are probably already using um, these features for care, and uh, um, yeah, are probably well versed in in building these well. Yeah, great. Well, thanks, Lori. All right, um, back to Jennifer. She's going to tell us a bit about the team reflection and maintaining momentum, the last portion of this test box. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Uh, so for this last section, um, we decided to build this section uh, because one of the components uh, within the evaluation plan is the team assessment old to new behaviors. It was something that I think was discussed just before summer and it didn't feel like quite the right time for uh, the teams to be doing that assessment. So what we thought is that we would build it into the last test box. So you may recall the teams doing uh, this assessment at the beginning of their PAC journey. Uh, some even did it at the PAC to launch day. And so what we would like is if teams can um, take some time to uh, reflect on current state and respond and complete this team assessment um, over, um, Bonnie's actually hoping to get it back by November 30th, that would be great. Ideally, the teams would be doing it um, as a collective, but I do mention in the test box, I recognize that that may not always be possible to get everybody together, so we did uh, provide some alternative uh, methods that you could use to uh, get those responses, so take a look there um, for some ideas. And one thing I would encourage is as, as the teams are going through this assessment to also, um, one of the activities is to reflect on some of the practices or changes that have been made over the last year that contributed to their selection uh, within this assessment. It's always good to reflect on um, you know, those changes and to acknowledge the changes and progress made. Because uh, one of the things that we have uh, found with these types of assessment where you have baseline and you have check-ins is that um, results um, can go down because, of course, they're not looking at their previous baseline assessment responses or, you know, responding based on where they think they're at now um, without doing that comparison initially. And, um, you know, results could stay the same or um, go down slightly just because maybe they were over overconfident and as they were doing the work, they realized that there was quite a bit more to do. So, um, and that's okay, that's fairly normal. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of benefit in, like I said, reflecting and acknowledging some of the practices changed over the last little while to really, um, uh, you know, um, generate that uh, forward momentum and encouragement to continue on. Um, uh, if you are interested in um, going through the activity where you are comparing to the baseline, you can reach out to Bonnie Lacusta, who could send you a copy of that baseline after uh, you've completed the current assessment and, and go through that activity as a team where you're actually looking at and comparing results. And uh, next slide, just some other things built into that section, um, some activities going back to and reflecting on the aim statement that was set by teams at the beginning. Um, looking to see if any revisions are needed or if they want to um, create a new aim statement to continue momentum forward. Same with the process map, uh, looking to capture, again, current state, uh, really reflect on what are those key practices that um, are areas of change that uh, help to improve efficiency or reduce those bottlenecks and to, to acknowledge that work done. Um, and even look to see if there are new bottlenecks that uh, the team wants to consider uh, looking at and doing some work on. 
We did incorporate um, a section on patient voice. We know that some teams have still struggled to incorporate um, getting, capturing that patient voice or patient involvement or feedback into the work that they're doing. So we've given some additional suggestions um, and, and, and a lot of the, the suggestions within there were based on uh, a recent conference that focused on, uh, um, that had quite a few components on patient engagement and patient voice. And um, I think, I mean, Michelle already talked about that partnership with communities and referral management, so I'm not going to speak to that. And I think the last work, the last point is just um, as we move forward, um, always uh, see how with any initiative and momentum forward, how you combine both uh, teamwork and task work um, to keep momentum and the, the team strong uh, while making improvements. Next slide, um, as many of you know, there, we are planning a face-to-face -face, uh, final share and learn in Calgary and Edmonton, July, January 24th, I mean, uh, more information to come. We are hoping that teams come, um, so do start getting your teams thinking about um, a creative story, or like an idea that's really taken off in their clinic or um, some, some input from patients or some feedback from patients that they want to share. Um, be creative in how you capture that and, and share that. Um, and also think about um, a show and tell component. Like were there certain resources that you found very valuable that were coming out, out of the text boxes or things that you found in other places that really helped your team with um, improving their care planning practices? Uh, please bring them with you and share them with us. We're really eager to, to get feedback and, and hear from teams about some of the work that they've done. Recognizing, so stuff is up on the, on the website and just quickly open it up to questions. And Bonnie, I don't know if you have anything to add. We have 39 o'clock, but uh, about the team assessment. Yeah, I think in the in the interest of time, yeah, uh, Jennifer, we'll just we'll just if you just want to yeah. keep on going. Yeah. So uh, as mentioned, Life Medical is presenting at the Accelerating Primary Care Conference. So if you do attend, please go and visit <laughs> and mm -hmm. and chat with them. And then I already mentioned that we have um, materials up on the website. And your job now is to take them out to teams. So enjoy and thanks for doing that. And to finish off, um, as mentioned, we've got the final celebration and share and learn on January 24th. The invite should be in your calendars already. If it is not, please let us know. Um, and more information is coming. But we're really excited to, to see you guys and uh, hear more. Share. Absolutely. Thanks, Jennifer. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning on our, our very last coaches. Uh, prep webinar, so it's been a it's been a pleasure, um, and uh, we, as Jennifer said, we really look forward to seeing you in person next time we're we're gathering. So thanks everyone, and have a have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. You as well.